I'm glad that uh, this is the last day. <laughs> Well, welcome back to our continuing attendees and aloha to those of you joining us for the very first time tonight to the 47th annual Buddha Studies Center Summer Session, Peace Through the Buddha Dharma with Sensei Reverend Kodo Umezu. He's with us virtually from the Jodo Shinshu Center in Berkeley, California. Uh, since he's been introduced four times this week already, uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the sensei, please refer to the materials on the Buddha Studies Center website. Uh, I realize that our moderators, including myself, have forgotten to introduce themselves. So uh, thank you to night number one moderator, Piper Toyama, a past president of the uh, Hompo Honganji Mission of Hawaii. On night two, uh, our BSC Director, Kevin, Reverend Kevin Kuniyuki, uh, hit a little bit for um, Raymond Takaui Jr., who's the president of the Mo'ili'ili Honganji uh, Mission Temple. Uh, night four, uh, Dr. Warren Tamamoto, our current president of the uh, Hopa Honganji Mission of Hawaii, was the moderator. And on nights three and tonight, um, myself, Dexter Marr, um, the president of the Hawaii Betsuin Temple here in Honolulu. Uh, as a veteran of BSC summer sessions, when we reached the final night, uh, the senseis you know, realized that five nights or 10 hours is not as much time as it seemed like on night number one. Uh, so there, there's still so much left to say and so much left to hear. Uh, so let's try hard to listen, hear, and appreciate the sharing of the Buddha Dharma. Uh, so far, Sensei Umezu has guided us through on the first night, uh, readings from the larger sutra and the origins of Amida Buddha, and also introduced the process of uh, considering peace through the Mon Shi Shu um, method. Um, on night two, he focused on the Dharmapada and the world that we live in, the burning world uh, from which Amida saves us. And, uh, and then on the third and fourth nights, it was going through enlightenment of ordinary people and how we use the Buddha Dharma you know, to lead peaceful lives. So now on to night number five and Sensei Umezu, uh, the microphone is yours. Thank you again for tuning in for this uh, last day of five day session. Um, I have a big smile on my face, uh, but uh, we like to begin uh, tonight's program first with a chanting of Shoshinge in Junirai junior melody, uh, verses one through 11. Please join me in chanting Shoshinge. Mugemutaiko and 
の症状感じちえこ、ふだんなんじむしょうこ、ちょうにちがこしょうじんせつ、いっさいぐんじょうむこしょう、ほんがんみょうごしょうじょうご、しししんしんぎょうがんにんじょうとがくしょうだいれはんいしめつどうがんじょうじゅうにょうらいしょういこしゅうせゆいせつみだほんがんかいごじょうくあくじぐんじょうかいおしんにょうらいにょうじつごんのほつい一年きあいしんふだんぼんのとくねはんぼんじょうぎゃくおさいえにゅうにょうしゅうしにゅうかいちみんせしゅうしんこうじょうしょうごんいのすいはむみょあんとんないしんぞうしうんむじょうふしんじつしんじんてんいにょにこふうんむうんむしげみょむあんぎゃくしんけんきょうだいきょうきんそくおちょうぜつごあくしゅいっさいぜんまくぼんぶにんもんしんにょうらいぐぜがんぶつごんこうだいしょうげしゃんぜんにんみょうふんだりけみだぶつおんがんねんぶじゃけんきょうまんなくしゅうじょうしんぎょうじゅうじじんにんなんなんちゅうしなんむかしなまんだむなハードディズトビボーンエンティヒューマンライフ。ナウィアルヴィンエ。ディフィカルティズトヒアルティーチングオブレスドウォン。ナウィヒアル。If we do not realize the truth in this life, when will it be realized? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. May we absorb in ourselves in the principles of the way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves the supreme will. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we be submerged in the depths of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we live in harmony in the great assembly as disciples of the Buddha. And be freed from all hindrances 
becoming units of true accord in the life of harmony, in a spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even though, even through myriad ages of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of the Tathagata's teaching. Thank you very much. Um, the <coughs> sutra, we say sutra, but it's not really a sutra. But to me, Chindan Shonin is manifestation of Amida Buddha. And what he wrote is same as sutra. So in Japan, we don't call it Shoshinge. We say O Shoshinge, O Shoshinge. We put on Arabic before the title. O Shoshinge o Itadaku. Itadaku is receiving from Buddha. Itadaku. So here in this country, it's very difficult to convey the feeling. We just say chan shoshinge, <laughs> but o shoshinge o itadakimasu has deeper feeling, showing a deep respect to the words of Shindan Shonin. Okay. So um, I picked the theme peace through Buddha Dharma. In other words, peace through Buddha's eye. Peace through Buddha's eye. Peace is his concern. Peace within each individual. Peace for the community and the world, collectively, individually, calming us down. Peace is the very concern of Tata itself. So Amida Tathagata appeared in our realm as Namo Amida. In this uh, beginning of session, um, he introduced me and he said, I'm here virtually. So I am here, here meaning your, your place virtually. But Buddha is not here virtually. Buddha is here as a real, real presence. Buddha is not virtual. So Buddha is real. Buddha is taking the form of the name, the sound, the calling. And this is written in this Shoshinge. So let us read the section, I mean, the, Translation of Shoshinge, we, we just finished chanting. Yes. Could you uh, go to the next? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, this is not the one I sent you. No. The second one I sent. Okay. Then forget it then. <laughs> it's okay. I, Sensei, I do have it. I can read it. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Hymn of the True Shinjin and the Nembutsu. Mm -hmm. I take refuge in the Tathagata of immeasurable life. I entrust myself to the Buddha of inconceivable light, Bodhisattva Dhammakara in his causal stage, under the guidance of Loksvara Ravaja Buddha, searched into the origins of Buddha's pure lands. And the qualities of those lands and their human beings and divas. He then established the supreme incomparable vow. He made the great vow rare and all encompassing. In five kalpas of profound thought, he embraced this vow, then resolved again that the name be heard throughout the 10 quarters. Everywhere the Buddhas cast light, immeasurable, boundless, unhindered, unequaled light, Lord of all brilliance, the pure light, joyful light, the light of wisdom, light constant, inconceivable, light beyond speaking, 
light surpassing sun and moon, is sent forth, illuminating countless worlds. The multitudes of beings all receive this radiance. The name embodying the primal vow is the act of true settlement. The vow of entrusting with sincere mind is the cause of birth. We realize the equal of enlightenment and supreme nirvana through the fulfillment of the vow of attaining nirvana without fail. Sakamuni Tathagata appeared in this world solely to teach the ocean-like primal vow of Amida. We, an ocean of beings in an evil age of five defilements, should entrust ourselves to the Tathagata's words of truth. When the one thought moment of joy arises, nirvana is attained without severing blind passions. When ignorant and wise, even grave offenders and slanders of the Dharma all alike turn about and enter Shinjin. They are like the waters that on entering the ocean become one in taste with it. The light of the compassion that grasps us illumines and protects us always. The darkness of our ignorance is already broken through. Still the clouds and mists of greed and desire, anger and hatred cover as always the sky of true and real Shinjin. But though the light of the sun is veiled by clouds and mist, beneath the clouds and mist, there is brightness, not dark. When one realizes Shinjin, seeing and revering and attaining great joy, one immediately leaps crosswise, closing off the five evil courses. All foolish beings, whether good or evil, when they hear and entrust to Amida's universal vow, are praised by the Buddha as people of vast and excellent understanding. Such a person is filled with a pure white lotus. For evil sentient beings of wrong views and arrogance, the Nambutsu that embodies Amida's primal vow is hard to accept in Shinjin. This is the most difficult of difficulties. Nothing surpasses. Thank you, uh, Dexter. Uh, the last sentence, last line, this the most difficult of difficulties, uh, Shakamuni Buddha said, to truly encounter this teaching is much more difficult than bringing two mountains together. For us to put our hands together, when we come to this pause, for us to put our hands together, this bringing one hand to, without the other hand is much more difficult than bringing two huge mountains together. So this Pure Land teaching is the great message handed down to us, but this is most misunderstood, misunderstood from the time of Shakyamuni Buddha, every place it goes. So during Shinrai Shonin's time, of course, many people did not hear the, the deep meaning of Tathagata's teaching. So, Honen Shonin, Shinran Shonin, the group, they were exiled, banned. Nembut's teaching was banned. And Shinran Shonin was exiled to Echigo, today's Niigata prefecture. So, you know, his life, Shinran Shonin, who wrote Shoshinge, or Shoshinge, he was faced with all kinds of challenges, but nothing stopped him expressing the deep joy of this Nembutsu teaching. He had faith, I mean, not strong faith, deep faith and deep appreciation. So out of that, he said, may the world be peaceful. You know, may the Dharma be a Dharma spread. 
Shin Lan Shonin's time, Japan, the nation, country of Japan, was chaos, civil war, fighting, killing each other. And that's the time Shin Lan Shonin was expressing his deep concern. Please, you know, leaders, leaders, please calm people down so that we could listen to the Dharma. When the world is in turmoil, no one can sit still and listen. That's why in Buddhism, you know, we talk about six realms. When you're in the human realm, you are able to hear. If you're in the realm of hungry ghost or hell or animal type of activities, or when you are uh, living in a heavenly life, living like a heavenly life, you know, you have no chance to hear the Dharma. So first we have to find ourselves in the calm world so that we could find true, true peace. Um, I know you people go visit the Hiroshima Memorial Park. There is a peace bell, peace bell. Have you uh, seen the uh, writings on the peace bell? Do you know what is written? No. <laughs> uh, you'll be surprised. <laughs> one is written in Greek. The other one is Sanskrit. Okay. Sanskrit, Sanskrit, you know, we, we're talking about Sanskrit. Raja Sutra, there is a Sanskrit version existing, right? So Indian uh, ambassador from India, knowing Japanese people, took one phrase from Raja Sutra and put it on the peace bell. That's the number five verse of Jusege. Number five, Jusege is on the peace bell, which was made in 1964. But it's written in Sanskrit, so people go there and <laughs> doesn't mean anything. But when you, um, we uh, visit Hiroshima Peace Memorial, you could explain this is Shinran Shonin's teaching, or not Shinran Shonin's teaching, but teaching that Shakyamuni Buddha wanted us to, you know, hear. Jusege, Jusege is inscribed. It's not inscribed. The one, not the engraved, the other one like, what's, what do you call? I don't know. Uh, it's not, I cannot hear what you're saying, so anyway. Uh, Sanskrit, it's a Skavati Vyuha Sutra. Skavati is a sutta. Sutta is a opposite of a dukkha. Dukkha is how do you spell dukkha? Dukkha is uh, suffering, suffering. Actually, Dukkha doesn't mean suffering. Um, bad alignment, I heard, bad alignment. So uh, we also not aligned, so life is, you know, uh, not smooth. Uh, sometimes we say bumpy road. I, you know, I understand what they're trying to say, so I'm not saying that's wrong, but sometimes the road is not bumpy, the wheels are uh, not aligned. Even the road is smooth, you know, <laughs> your ride is bumpy. So opposite of Dukkha is Sutta, almost like a, this is negative, this is the positive. Uh, it's like a bliss or peace, happiness. So, Skavati Vyuha Sutra is the name of Raja Sutra. 
and that is written on the uh, peace bell. So Jusege is uh, Tathagata, I mean, uh, Amida Buddha causal stage when he was uh, Bodhisattva, he made a vow. So uh, Jusege is wishing the bell is telling the world may everyone find real peace. So many people misunderstand or misunderstood, even today, people don't understand deep meaning of Namo Amida Butsu or Amida Buddha. So during the time of uh, Shindan Shonin, he was accused, or not just him, but the group, Pyoran group, started drawing more people. And uh, other groups, you know, they accused uh, Pyoran group. They're uh, starting something new. It's like a cult. But Shindan Shonin had to convince people that it's not the cult, it's not something new. It is the true essence of the Dharma. You know, Jodo Shinshu, Jodo Shinshu, we call this as a organizational, we think it's an organizational name, but Shindai Shonin said, Jodo Shinshu means Shin Shu is a true essence. Essence. True. Jodo is enlightenment, Pyolan. Tata, Dharma. <laughs> Whatever you may call. Jodo is the uh, uh, Buddha's realm, Buddha's world, true and the real. What this means, what is this? The true essence of this, he called, you know, uh, Pyoran teaching as a Jodo Shinshu. The teaching is Jodo Shinshu. So go to, please go to the next page. Yeah. So Shinran Shonin, in his writing, Kyogyo Shinsho, he had quoted many, many uh, masters and teachers uh, accounts or statements or sayings, uh, quoting from others, not just the Pyolan tradition. And uh, one of the uh, statement we could see is that the Tendai master, actually Tendai was kind of accusing uh, Pyolan group. So Shinran Shonin has to, Tell them, look, <laughs> your teacher in China had said this. Could you read this? Ching Wen of Shanyin, master of the Tiantai school, states, because the Buddha's name arises from the body of true reality and of fulfillment, because it arises from the ocean of compassion, because it arises from the ocean of the vow, because it arises from the ocean of wisdom, because it arises from the ocean of the Dharma gates, simply to say the name of this one Buddha wholeheartedly is itself to say the names of all Buddhas, because it embodies immeasurable virtues. It eradicates the obstructions of our karmic evil and enables us to be born in the pure land. Why should there be any doubt? Isn't this something? Uh, Tendai. So in China, there is no uh, separation of uh, uh, groups. You know, all Buddhists study everything. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, there are so many uh, classrooms, I think, you know, the different groups studying certain things, but they don't have a different so called schools. And, you know, uh, they, they, they are more inclusive. So Tendai Master. Uh, I don't, I can't pronounce his name, but uh, he, he was explaining, you know, this uh, na, na, Namo Amidabut is, came, uh, came from the uh, body of uh, true reality, you know, as I have been uh, introducing to you. 
And the next uh, next page. Fei Shi of the Chan School states, the virtue of Nabutsu Samadhi is supreme. Because it is chief of all practices, it is called the king of Samadhis. <laughs> I don't think uh, Zen group like to hear this, but you know, we are not negating Samadhi. Samadhi is Namu Amidabu Tsushin is saying. Namu Amidabu is you know, connecting, connecting us to Tata, right? So when we receive, or when we receive the light, this is, this, there is a cloud here. <laughs> we receive the light, darkness disappears. Darkness disappears. From that point, people here always say thank you, you know, always appreciating the light coming. So their life is more samadhi. <laughs> their life itself, if they are cooking, it's samadhi. If they are uh, mowing the lawn, samadhi. When they are crying, and saying nembutsu, it's a samadhi. Not just a sitting or uh, walking around some kind of uh, statue or building. Okay. So please open the next page. Uh, Shinran Shonin, throughout his uh, uh, life and in his writings, we sense the three exclamation marks. One is how true it is, how sad it is, how happy I am, how happy I am. He was so grateful, but he was so, you know, uh, you, know you know, his feeling, the deep appreciation for the truth that he encountered. And he realized the sadness of human condition, his own condition and human conditions, not just today from the timeless past. So next, please. This one, I don't know why I put this in, but my, my grandma in Japan, Bachan's uh, poem, I thought that would be nice to uh, honor my Bachan. <laughs> she, uh, live humble life, uh, appreciating Namu Amidamutsu. Could you read it? Because of me being ignorant and foolish, the Buddha has become the sixth character that always stays with me. Yeah. My Bachan was, her life was not easy in life. She didn't live an easy in life. But deep inside, she had a deep uh, appreciation over the uh, Nembut's teaching that kept her going. No matter how difficult her life was, she was able to live through. And at the age of 88, she returned to the Pure Land. I was looking for my Bachan's picture so I could show you my Bachan's face, but I realized I don't need to have a picture. Namu Amidabutsu is Bachan. My Bachan is in Namu Amidabutsu. So I'm so grateful that, uh, you know, I was surrounded. I, I, I didn't know about my Bachan being such a devout uh, Nembutsu follower. Later I found out. Uh, but, okay, could you go to the next page? Oh, no, we skipped those. Okay. Could you skip this? Skip the three pages, yeah. Okay, skip that. Okay. okay. Let's go to the next section. Okay, could you go to the next, yeah. So this, I'm gonna just, uh, uh, I'm not going to spend much time on this. Uh, uh, we talk about the world peace. So in the history, I could name few, and you know, just a few people. Uh, 
uh, Indian flag in the middle, uh, you see a wheel. Uh, that came from uh, Ashoka's uh, uh, time. Uh, maybe you could read this. I know you don't have to read it. Uh, that's the uh, wheel of Dharma, wheel of Dharma. Uh, it's not Buddhist symbol. India, in India, there was a belief that someday great man appears who could uh, bring the peace to the world. And the Buddha, when Shakyamuni Buddha came into this world, she, he was regarded as a spiritual leader who, you know, who uh, was able to bring peace to mankind. So they used the Indian symbol. Buddhist group borrowed the Indian symbol as uh, a sign of Buddhist teaching. So this is not Buddhist uh, <laughs> uh, uh, property or anything. It's just the uh, Indian uh, uh, sign uh, shows the leader has great virtue, he must have a great virtue, okay? like a Buddha or this uh, uh, mis, uh, mi, uh, the king that they're waiting to appear. Yeah, next page. Yeah. So, okay, you could go next one. Next. Um, anyway, Ashoka is the one encouraged people to uh, pay attention to uh, spiritual life. And he did not make Buddhism as a state religion. He respected all kinds of religions in India. Okay. But he himself, uh, took refuge in Buddha, and he um, helped create stupas all over the country. And uh, 1980, no, 1898, when I think your organization was organized officially, um, that year, uh, Indian, not Indian, uh, British uh, research group, uh, did excavation, excavation and found uh, remainings of Buddhas. And uh, Indian, uh, and that time India was not an independent uh, country, so uh, Britain uh, shared uh, relics with other Buddhist uh, countries, Japan, Thai, and of course Thai had their own, but the Thailand received some uh, Buddha, some of the Buddha's relics. And in 1930-something, uh, King of Siam, you know, Thailand today, but then Siam, uh, gifted a small uh, piece of uh, Buddha's remains to the DCA. So that's why I just wanted to talk about Ashoka, you know, what Ashoka did. <laughs> and today, BCA, we have stupa uh, on top of uh, uh, North America Honganji, which is also known as San Francisco Buddhist Church. Yeah. Uh, they built the uh, uh, building uh, to erect the stupa on top. And there we have uh, remains of Shakyamuni Buddha uh, coming from uh, Thailand and together with Shariputra and uh, Mogalana. Mogalana, you know, you know story of Obong. <laughs> Uh, these two attendants of Shakyamuni Buddha, their remains are uh, enshrined in San Francisco uh, on top of our headquarters, Hondo. Uh, so when you come, uh, please come and visit uh, headquarters. Okay. And world peace, um, I mean, the world leaders in, uh, I talked about Tanran yesterday, when Tanran was uh, doing his uh, research and the sharing the Dharma with people, the emperor of China respected, bowed to him. <laughs> so that leader of the country bowing their head to something big. That's, you know, Shin Ajoni wanted to uh, share. This is Shin Ajahn's writing, him of Fionland Masters, Tanlan. You know, uh, it, it's not like a, uh, 
you know, I'm not hoping or asking state to, uh, you know, take, I mean, adopt Buddhism as a state religion or anything, but leader is being humble, you know, in the spiritual sense. Uh, it's very uh, important to understand people's feeling. So next page. Would you read? And uh, uh, like uh, six, 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 seven years ago, uh, guest lecturer from Japan, Kumagai Sensei from Kyoto University came and he told us the story of a king in Bhutan. Bhutan is near India. Uh, uh, he, when he became a uh, king, he took, uh, took over the position about 10 years ago, I think. Uh, his message to the uh, people in the nation. Could you read it? Throughout my reign, I will never rule you as a king. I will protect you as a parent, care for you as a brother, and serve you as a son. You know, this really, it's heartwarming. This is the attitude of leader, attitude of leader. So I don't know, Bhutan right now, I'm sure they're going through some difficulties, but they are very fortunate to have their leader who is thinking about, you know, people with this sense, this kind of feeling. So go to the next one, please. Uh, people, some people will know Shotoku Taishi or Prince Shotoku. Uh, during his time, uh, Japan uh, adopted this uh, 17 article constitution and this is number 10, right? Could you read? You shall be free of anger as well as wrath. You shall not be angry at your another's being different from you. Each person has his own mind and each mind has his own way. What another thinks to be right, I may think to be wrong. What I think to be right, another may think to be wrong. But I am no saint. He is no fool. We are both just common mortals. How can we tell what really is right or wrong? Both he and I are sometimes wise and sometimes foolish, just as an earring is endless. Therefore, you should reflect upon your own faults, even when another becomes furious with you. You should consult with others, even when you think that you are right. It's easy to say this is a difficult, you know, things to do. Um, yeah, especially uh, people in a, a position of leadership. I don't mean a particular tempo or anything, but ministers, tempo leaders, um, we need to keep uh, this in mind, especially uh, ministers and the president and the board members. We, what, none of them are uh, the head of the tempo. Head of the temple is Namo Amida Buddha. Head of the temple is Amida Buddha. We are serving under Amida Buddha. Um, my home temple in Fukuoka, small temple, small hondo. When I went back to Japan attending some uh, major service uh, services, I saw my home temple had like four board members. They are sitting in the front, front row and they are given a task to lead like a three treasures kind of thing or creed. You know, they are the ones you know, leading others. Uh, so they are the ones must be sitting and listening, right? Um, other people, I don't mean, this is for anything, everything. We don't, we don't um, listen to each other. We observe what others do. <laughs> you know, I'm, 
I'm to be blamed for whatever that I do, you know, not giving a good influence, but uh, the kids, children grow up by watching parents, not by hearing what they say. They really uh, watch, you know, they are watching what the parents are doing. So sometimes the parents uh, drop the kids off at the church and they go off to a coffee shop or something. So when these kids grow up certain age, they say, oh, good grief, I could now stay home, you know. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it wasn't, you know, they're not enjoying, you know, but parents want to go sitting in a condo, listening and appreciating, you know, kids may be playing with other kids in the classroom. They remember parents going to a church, you know, and that's what true education is. So um, this uh, 17, I, I mean, Article 10 of this constitution, it has so many uh, messages. Uh, we, each one is speaking so-called truth coming from each individual. It's true. Everybody, I'm not gonna, you, you don't say I'm gonna lie. You know, whatever I say is true. That's why it's hard. <laughs> it is true. And what's the other person saying true too? But unfortunately, you know, there's a system, right? Majority vote or whatever. So that's how we uh, decide make a decision for any organizations. I'm not talking about church or anything, any uh, organization, nation or city council, everything, you know. But when it comes to a Buddhist group, we have to first say, Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu means I am here you know, to treasure these three virtues, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So you have to step back a little bit minister too, and the leaders too, we need to step up. We need to put Shinran Shionin in that center, Amida Buddha, Shakamuni Buddha center. And what are they saying? And also, when we listen to the voices of the members, we need to find out, not what they say, but the voiceless voice, we have to listen. What are they saying? What is their deep uh, uh, desire? So that is very difficult. It takes time for people to understand, you know, not just uh, listening to the words. I was watching a, a Japanese program. Uh, it's called a professional. And uh, one, one program, very interesting, a famous architect in Japan, NHK, you know, they were interviewing him and uh, him, you know, talking about his way of helping people. He said he meets with his clients many times. He, he meets with his clients many times and talk to, listen to them, find out who they are. They don't talk about the house. They don't talk about the building. They don't talk about design. They just talk about the family, who they are, what kind of lifestyle do they have. And he designs everyone. They express their appreciation. Thank you for designing such a wonderful house for us. According to him, architect, people don't know. People don't know what kind of house is good for them. People say, oh, we like to have a bathroom like this. We like to have a window this side, fireplace here, hardwood floor. But this architect listening to family's conversation, their hobbies, makeup of the family, he thinks what's good for them. So sometimes to hear, I mean, Usually clients come, come in and say, okay, would you please make a big window 
facing south and this and that, you know. But architect, good architect, knows that's not the way house should be built. <laughs> so uh, leaders need to listen and what do they really want and try to uh, you know, uh, make that happen. And that's, I don't need to go into that kind of thing, but anyway, uh, please go to the next. Uh, and now Shinran Shonin wish for the world. Could you read? Passages on the land of happiness states, I have collected true words to aid others in their practice for attaining birth. In order that the process be made continuous, without end and without interruption, by which those who have been born first guide those who come later, and those who are born later join those who were born before. This is so that the boundless ocean of birth and death be exhausted. This um, passage really moves me. When I was born, already temples are there. Honganji was there. Or the Ryukoku University was there. BCA was here. Shinran Shonin, he wanted to leave the words of sages for us coming after him. He cared. He truly cared for us. So he compiled this Kyogyo Shinsho, the main book in Jodo Shinshu, the treasure of the treasure in Kyogyo Shinsho. So we are, you know, given this book. We are gifted with this book, all the sayings. First, what a nonsense, you know, you may think, what is this Namo Amida Utsu business? It's nonsense, but you listen and listen and listen. Wow, this is something. So please go to the next page. Next page, please. Oh, yeah, okay, this is good. You know, um, in Hawaii, <laughs> you have many individuals, you know, you people plus in the past, Ruth Tabra, uh, she and uh, Matsumoto Sensei, uh, <laughs> Shoji Matsumoto Sensei, I think got together and uh, transliterate uh, Jusege. And I like this uh, transliteration of Jusege and I don't know, the, since uh, Matsumoto, Bishop Matsumoto, do you use this often? No? Okay. Anyway. Well, not too often. <laughs> yeah, let's read it. You know, this is a good time to read again and remind us of uh, Dharmakara's vows. These 48 great vows, which I, Dharmakara Bodhisattva, establish for myself and all beings, none to be excluded, now, everywhere, in the ongoing timelessness of this present moment, affirm the reality of the infinite within this world of birth and death. Through these vows, I vow the vow that is primal vow of life itself, until this shall be fulfilled for each one, everywhere. I will not accept the great supreme enlightenment, I will not rest as Amitabha Amitayus Amida, the Buddha of universal reality, the Buddha of truth as things as they are. Throughout all time, in every generation of beings, if my vow does not become the source of wisdom and compassion, the cause of this great awakening in each and everyone everywhere, I will not accept the great supreme enlightenment. I will not rest as Amitabha 
Amitayus Amida, the Buddha of universal reality, the Buddha of the truth of things as they are. Upon my becoming a Buddha, my name shall resound throughout the farthest reaches of the universe. If there is even one place where my name is not being heard, I will not accept the great supreme enlightenment. I will not rest as Amitabha Amitayus Amida, the Buddha of universal reality, the Buddha of the truth of things as they are. To attain the great supreme enlightenment, to become the Dharma teacher of gods and men, I shall without ceasing practice the great practice, Brahma Karaya. They are all inclusive, most difficult and final practice. Without the hindrance of desire, in the dhyana samadhi of contemplation, from which the purest wisdom, the immeasurable pure compassion of the workings of my vow shall flow. This great vow shall be all penetrating, universal, a shining light of wisdom and compassion, an inconceivable light, illuminating our, dark, our inner darkness, enabling us to see our ignorance, our hatred our unquenchable desires, our own deep, awesome, true reality. But the vows incomparable enlightenment rescues us, just as they are. From the heavens of self-pride, the hellish torments of the worlds of illusion, which we constantly create, the vows unfailing light replaces our blindness with the eye of wisdom. It dispels the illusion of these empty worlds in which we cling. It transforms the realms in which we suffer and opens us to the real world of things as they are. The Pure Land, the realm of this extraordinary light, Amitabha Amatayus, infinite light in life, awakens us to the joy that never diminishes, the true happiness of working for the welfare of all beings everywhere, the true happiness of Buddhahood, the universal endowment of the vow, for the sake of all beings, to all, at all times, everywhere, with the light of wisdom itself, I preach the Dharma. My vow assures this treasure of all treasures, the virtue among virtues, the inexhaustible storehouse of Dharma, which my name shall convey. I offer the flowers of enlightenment to all Buddhas to be. I, sh I show my reverence to each of them. I praise each one's virtuous roots. As my vows become fulfilled, I will be the champion of naturalness, freed from the proud thought of I am such. A Tathagata's eye of wisdom penetrates even man's self-centeredness, penetrates conditioned and unconditioned equal equally. Piercing the depths of inner darkness, I vow that the power of my wisdom will be such that I will become a true Buddha. This having become so, the cosmos will resound with the Dharma. Flowers of enlightenment, like the rain of light, will adorn all beings. You have a wonderful um, treasure in your organization and you know, you don't need to chant Kimyo Muryo. Maybe you could read part of this every, every day together at home before dinner or something. Uh, that's what we can do, uh, focusing ourselves. Uh, Ruth Tabra was invited to uh, our Buddhist women's convention held in Fresno uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago. And uh, she was a great speaker. And she expressed her concern. So many young people leaving temples. But they better find out what they are leaving behind before they leave. They don't even know what they are leaving behind. So Amida's light touching many individuals and those individuals becoming light in the community. 
they have left things to read, things to talk about. We need to receive the treasures from our predecessors, as Shinran Shonin said. So let us take a break now for a short time, five minutes or so. Then we could reassume. And I try to finish everything by 9.30, I mean, 6.30. And uh, we could have 30 minutes of uh, uh, dialogue. Okay. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you, Sensei. Um, yeah, we'll uh, take our break now. Um, let's see, let's uh, return at um, 6.05, okay? Uh, we have just one hour left with the Sensei, so we'll have a short break. We'll see you back at 6.05.
Okay, it's 6.05. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we will hold questions uh, and answers for our discussion period after uh, Sensei Umezu you know, finishes his, his talk um, so that we don't break the continuity of his train of thought. So Sensei, back to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming back. Uh, would you uh, please show the next uh, slide? Carrie, yeah. harmony, harmony of community, human community. Yeah. Yep. Could you uh, read that? Imagine a country, a country lying in absolute darkness, with many living beings blindly rushing around. Naturally, they'll be frightened and lonely as they run about without recognizing one another then let us imagine that suddenly a superior person with a torch appears and everything around becomes bright and clear. The living beings find great relief as they look around, recognize one another, and happily share their companionship. When the world of human life flies in the darkness of ignorance, those who have no light of wisdom in their minds wander in loneliness and fear. They do not know how to associate with their fellow humans in peaceful harmony, and they are naturally miserable and afraid. A superior person with a torch refers to Buddha, assuming human form, and by his wisdom and compassion, he illuminates the world. In this light, people find themselves as well as others and are glad to establish human fellowship and harmonious relations. Thousands of people may live in a community, but it is not one a real fellowship until they know each other and have sympathy for one another. A true community has faith and wisdom that illuminates it. A true community is a place where the people know and trust one another and where there is social harmony. It is harmony that gives life meaning to every community. Paraphrase from the teachings of the Buddha, chapter two. This was um, uh, taken from uh, teaching of Buddha book, BDK, Bukyo uh, Dendo Kyokai. And uh, my assistant, Edith Vasso, helped me with this uh, editing. She is a great editor. So if you <laughs> see her, you know, you could ask her to help you. But uh, this uh, under the light, you know, we find ourselves. It's almost like a, I don't know uh, this is the right uh, word to use, but coming out, yeah, coming out, we are coming out from uh, not sure, uh, you know, but we could be ourselves, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, uh, difficult, but I'm no one, <laughs> I mean, I'm, Stupid individual <laughs> living in, in this you know corner of the world in the universe, you know, acting like something. Uh, you know, Buddha is uh, addressing to us or me, hey you Bongu. But I look around, hey Bongu, talking about you, <laughs> not me. We are always uh, not really recognizing oneself as such. When Buddha's light, you know, when we encounter the light, we realize the truth of ourselves. And it's okay to be that way. It's okay. It's okay to be. So 
when Buddha is uh, uh, calling us with bombu, I don't think I'm bombu. That's the sign of bombu. That's the sign of bombu. By the way, um, uh, one of our past president of BCA, uh, he decided to use bombu on his uh, license plate, uh, but uh, they said, no, you cannot use bombu. <laughs> reason was it's spelled bomb you <laughs> so please don't use that spelling uh, when you are typing uh, sending an email or something that word is really explosive <laughs> <laughs> so b-o-n-b-u okay bomb uh, bomb bomb usually original meaning is just ordinary people you know just the commoners but sometimes the foolish individual. So uh, Honganji translation uh, usually says foolish beings. But, uh, you know, uh, this is the something funny. I don't have much time, but the funny story I need to insert. Uh, in Japan town, somebody said, sensei, 10 people turn around. <laughs> There's so many senseis, you know. Calligraphy sensei, karate sensei, tea ceremony sensei. You know. Uh, you know, when we are called sensei, we turn around. But when we are called bombu, hmm, 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 it's not me. <laughs> when we uh, realize, you know, I am the one uh, being targeted by Buddha. You know. uh, thank you, Buddha, for recognizing me. You know. So, uh, by Bachan's form, you know, Bachan realizes her ignorance and, uh, you know, uh, her condition. And because of such, we are such, Buddha appears as Nammandaps, Nammandaps, accompanying our life. So please go to the next page. Well, we have to kind of hurry up. Okay, this is something we need to know. Please read. The Japanese may not have very many original ideas to contribute to the world, to world thought or world culture, but in Shin, Jodo Shinshu, we find one major contribution Japanese can make to the outside world. D.T. Suzuki, Shin Buddhism, Chapter 2. Yeah, D.T. Suzuki, um, his uh, last work was translation of Shin Nanshonin's writing, and he couldn't finish everything, but... Uh, uh, at the end, he really appreciated Shinran Shonin. So someone like D.T. Suzuki, you know, we need to listen to what he's saying about Jodo Shinshu. We have been receiving <laughs> Jodo Shinshu, but not paying attention and discarding. So okay, go to the next page. Final summary. <laughs> This is Shinran Shonin's words just before Shoshin Nembutsuge. Uh, I, I, I like this part of Kyogyo Shinsho, so I wanted to share. It's about three, four pages. Respectfully, I say to all people who aspire to be born in the Pure Land, the ocean of one vehicle, the universal vow, has consummated the highest virtue which is unhindered, unbounded, supreme, profound, inexplicable, indescribable, and inconceivable. How can this be? It is because the vow surpasses conceptual understanding. The vow of compassion is like vast space, for all its excellent virtues are broad and boundless. It is like an immense cart, for it carries all people, whether ignorant or wise, wherever they may be. It is like a wonderful lotus blossom, for it is not stained by anything in the world. It is like the clear sight tree, the king of medicines, for it overcomes all the diseases of blind passions. It is like a sharp sword, for it rends the armor of pride and ignorance. It is like the banner of a valiant general, and for, for it subdues all the armies uh, of Maras. 
It is like the keen saw blade, for it fells all trees in the forest of ignorance. It is like a sharp axe, for it lops off all the branches of suffering. It is like a true teacher, for it unknots all the ropes of birth and death. It is like a guiding master, for it informs foolish beings of the essential way of liberation. It is like a spring, for it wells forth with the waters of wisdom, which are inexhaustible. It is like a lotus, for it is not tainted by any karmic evil. It is like a swift wind, for it dispels the fogs of all hindrances. It is like a clear nectar, for it is perfectly possesses all tastes of virtue. It is like the right path, for it leads the multitudes of beings into the capital of wisdom. It is like a magnet, for it draws to itself the virtues originating from the primal vow. It is like the jambunda gold, for it overwhelms all the good of the conditioned world with its brightness. It is like a hidden treasure store, for it embraces the dharmas of all the Buddhas. It is like the great earth, for all the Tathagathas of the past, present, and future throughout the ten quarters arise from it. It is like the light of the sun, for it breaks through the darkness of, and ignorance of all foolish beings and gives rise to Shinjin in them. It is like the supreme ruler, for it stands above all those of the upper vehicle. It is like a strict father, for it gives guidance to all, both the ignorant and the wise. It is like a compassionate mother, for it gives birth to and nurtures the true and real cause of birth in the fulfilled land for all, both the ignorant and the wise. It is like a nursing mother, for it raises and protects all people who, ins who aspire for birth, both the good and evil. It is like the great earth, for it sustains the birth of all beings. It is like the great waters, for it washes away the scum of all blind passions. It is like a great fire, for it burns the firewood of all views. It is like a great wind, for it goes everywhere in the world and is without hindrance. The vow liberates one from the castle of the feathers, fetters of the three realms of existence and closes the gateways to the 25 forms of existence. It brings one to attainment of the true and real fulfilled land and distinguishes the wrong from the right path. It drives up the ocean of ignorance and causes beings to flow into the ocean of the vow. It brings one to ride on the ship of all knowing wisdom so that one sails out into the ocean of beings. It brings to perfect fulfillment the store of merit and wisdom and opens the store of provisional means. Truly, we should reverently receive and accept it. No, no words could be added. Uh, I want you to visit Shinran Shonin's words whenever you have time. Uh, this is the collected works of Shinran Shonin. So go to the next page. This is uh, taken from a book called The Buddha and the Man, book published by uh, your uh, bookstore, uh, Buddha Study Center. Uh, Arai Sensei uh, translated. Uh, please read two pages, I think. Today, the Nembutsu is heard all over Japan. There may be no Japanese except infants and very young children who has never said the Nembutsu or heard, it, heard of it recited. Japan being a country of Mahayana Buddhism, this is not, nothing surprising. For that matter, however, all things in the universe, always in transition, unfailingly draw our attention to the Nembutsu, which is the only truth and reality. Even the sounds of temple bells remind us that meeting the Nembutsu is the biggest and most urgent task in life. The Nembutsu is a call from the saving power directed to us. It is deplorable that too many people not realizing this take little notice of that call. However, as stated in the preface to the Kyogyo Shinsho, 
It is difficult to meet the most favorable karmic condition created by the universal vow, even in billions of kalpas. Therefore, we should regard it as significant that a person has at least heard somebody say the Nambutsu. It means that the karmic condition connecting him with the power of the vow, like a piece of thread, has already been prepared. When the person begins to ask about the meaning of the Nembutsu, think about it or say something, say it some way or other, the both ends of the thread are already crossing each other. However, it is usually, it usually takes some time for them to make a tight knot. This process goes through different stages and changes in depth, strength, and direction. Written by Ikeyama Ekichi, a professor of the German language. This was written in uh, 1930 something. So Japan today is a little different from the time he was uh, describing. <laughs> uh, but uh, this book was written by Ikeyama Sensei, translated by Arai Sensei, and published by uh, your bookstore, I mean, uh, Buddhist Study Center. Your Buddhist Study Center has great publication, um, but you know, you could go there and uh, uh, please, you know, you already have those things. Please read these books and over and over. Uh, it, it says it takes time for us to truly appreciate depths of the message. And like here, you know, you look at the space, bus space, one little dot and this string meeting you know, for us to encounter this teaching is almost accident. If you, when you encounter like this, don't let this go by in vain, you know. This is the time to stop. This could make you stop and go along with it. That, that's what uh, Sensei is saying. Please go to the next. Like, this is Sensei's uh, uh, poem. How sad and painful it is to see the sentient beings repeatedly sink and float in the ocean of birth and death due to their own evil karma. Since the begin beginningless beginning of time, unrequitedly, Amida has thought only of me and extended his saving hand because I'm his child. The heart and the mind of this universal suchness regarding each and every one of us as, you know, only child, especially those who are having difficulties. So he found himself, you know, as Buddha's child. That doesn't mean Buddha gave a birth, but in a way, universe gave a birth to all beings, all beings, insect, flowers, Weed, we, we put the name, but my life and little uh, uh, mosquito, body is same, life is life, you know? But we, we are the one, oh, they're just a little insect, it's okay to kill. But, you know, in this big uh, given uh, realm, every life, is uh, gifted. So we need to have a deep understanding. Yeah. Go to the next one. Now this one, uh, written, a book written by Diane uh, Johnson. Uh, she uh, came to a, a national Fujinkai convention held in Sacramento. Uh, this is about 10 years ago. She published the book and I uh, share some of uh, three of three pages of her book because it's like me speaking. I mean, this I could resonate. I could. Uh, it's like me. Yeah. Could you read that? A day in the life of a Shin Buddhist by Diane Johnson. I will show you. I will show you my kindness. I will show you my heart. I will show you my compassion. 
I will show you my wisdom. What I show you is not true. What I show you is not real. My kindness is often laced with greed. My heart is often very small. My compassion is often lacking. My wisdom is non-existent. What am I to do? All I can do is call to Amida, Namo Amida Butsa. Amida sees my foolishness. Amida sees my greed. Amida sees my stupidity. I am still in Amida's heart. Nothing more for me to do. Nothing for me, nothing more I can do. It has all been done for me and for you. Namu Amida Butsu. Next page. <laughs> Goodness escapes me. Goodness escapes me. Compassion escapes me. Wisdom is a distant memory. My kindness is born from ego. Is it possible for me to be genuine? I feel fake and false. I don't know anything. Empty. Amida Buddha sees me. Amida Buddha vowed to save the likes of me. Amida Buddha threw his compassionate net so wide that even someone as evil as me gets caught up in its grasp. Good for nothing, that's me. And that makes me perfect for Amida Buddha. Namu Amida Butsu. The next page. I realize my limitations. I realize my limitations. I do not claim any great knowledge of Buddhism. I have very little formal education. I'm a terrible student in general. I am a dig in the dirt Shin Buddhist. I get my hands dirty with life. I scream out loud when the pain in my heart is deep. I call to Amida when my heart is filled with the joy of the Dharma. I see the Buddha's teachings in the earth as I plant flowers. I couldn't tell you from memory the names of the sutras, but I can share with you my laughter and tears, for that is my dharma. Amida Buddha is present in all we do and is part of who we are. I dig in the dirt, then with soiled hands, and Gasho call to Amida and say, thank you. Yesterday, I uh, extended my invitation to uh, your president, Dr. Tamamoto, to come over to my house for dinner. And, uh, you know, if I invite, I need to send him a, a plane ticket, a round trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now he said no, and I'm not going to send you the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm using this as an uh, uh, example, you know. If I know you have no money and I tell you to come and you think you have, you have a way to come, you know, we are not <laughs> communicating. From me, I know, I, I know you don't. Then I send you ticket, but you might say, no, sensei, you don't need to send ticket. I'll manage, you know, and get to your place. You know, that means you are not truly knowing your condition. When Amida Buddha saying, just, he, just say Namo Amida Buddha, that's enough, nothing else. Amida side knows us. <laughs> Whatever we are holding is trash. We, we think it's something great, but it's, under the light of a, I mean, uh, this wisdom light, it's just the garbage we're holding on. We think it's something. So when, you know, you know even, uh, even if you uh, come to realize halfway, halfway, oh yeah, I don't have much money, but well, I accept the ticket from uh, uh, me, I mean sensei, uh, but I should take some omiyage a gift. <laughs> that means you're still not 100% aware of your condition. <laughs> uh, that's the difficulty, you know, when Buddha is saying, just come with Namo Amidabutsu, this 
lady, Diane Johnson, coming to realize, I have come to realize, thank you, you know, <laughs> nothing, you know. I think I know Buddhism. I don't know anything. You know, I should be standing here. <laughs> I just bring, I, I like to bring Shinran Shonin's words and these people's words to you so we can listen. We can, you know, hear what they're saying about us. So I don't feel comfortable speaking, you know, teaching kind of thing, Jono Shinshu, but you know, by visiting these individuals, words of Shinran Shonin and the masters, you know, we get, wow, you know, we come to, we, we come out. I'm, I'm good for nothing, <laughs> you know, but acting like something, acting like something, that is creating more difficulties. You know, we try to manipulate each other. We try to control each other, trying to make the world go the way we want. And we create difficulties. You know end up starting the war, right? So please go to the next page. We have less than a few minutes. I think a few more, just a few more pages. This is something that I uh, spoke at uh, General Assembly Hall. Uh, 2011, but uh, you, you don't have to do this. Uh, you could hand this out later. Okay. Uh, go to next page, next, next page. Next page. Next page. So people want to have a copy, you could ask for the copy. This is Shinran Shonin's uh, uh, words at the beginning of uh, Kyogyo Shinsho. Please read this. Ah, hard to encounter, even in many lifetimes, is the decisive cause of birth, Amida's universal vow. Hard to realize, even in myriads of kalpas, is pure Shinjin that is true and real. If you should come to realize this practice in Shinjin, rejoice at the conditions from the distant past that have brought it about. But if in this lifetime still you are entangled in a net of doubt, then unavoidably you must pass once more in the stream of birth and death through myriads of kalpas. Wholly sincere indeed are the words of truth that one has grasped, never to be abandoned the right dharma all surpassing and wondrous. Hear and reflect and let there be no wavering or apprehension. How joyous I am, Gotoku Shinran, disciple of Sakamuni. Rare it is to come upon the sacred scriptures from the westward land of India and the commentaries of the masters of China and Japan, but now I have been able to encounter them. Rare it is to hear them, but rarely have I been able to hear, reverently entrusting myself to the teaching, practice, and realization that are the true essence of the Pure Land Way. I'm especially aware of the profundity of the Tathagata's benevolence. Here I rejoice in what I have heard and extol what I have attained. Thank you very much. Here I, I underlined one sentence, hear and reflect. That's the word mon shi. Mon shi, kiku, hear, reflect. Shinran Shonin emphasized, listen, hear, you know, and reflect, and know your capacity. Onoga ryo shirep, know yourself. So know ourselves through the light. So go to the final page. Take refuge in Amida, the true and real light. Take refuge in Amida, the enlightenment of non-discrimination. Take refuge in Amida, the one beyond conception. Take refuge in Amida, 
the ultimate shelter. Take refuge in Amida, the ocean-like great mind and heart. Take refuge in Amida, the supreme, the supremely honored one. Take refuge in Amida, the inexpressible Buddha. Take refuge in Amida, the truly immeasurable one. Take refuge in Amida, the store of virtues fulfilled through the primal vow. Take refuge in Amida, the treasury of virtues. I go to the Buddha for guidance. I take refuge in the Buddha, Namo Buddha, Namo Buddha with perfect wisdom and compassion, Namo Amidabutsu, Namandabs, Arigato, hard it is to be. Namandabs, 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 Namandabs. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, spending time with me for the last four days and five days. Uh, there are so many other uh, materials, resources that you could uh, be uh, reading, but everything has been said in the past. Uh, ministers, uh, uh, you know, here to share the words of Shakyamuni Buddha, words of Shinran Shonin, and try to live our lives together, sharing happiness and unhappiness. We live in this human life difficult. We encounter difficulties, inevitable difficulties. That's the time we need each other. We need to listen to each other. We need to be together, crying together, laughing together, smiling together. That's the beginning of the peace in each individual, in the peace in the world. But the big picture, we should always listen to what the Shinran Shonin has said and Shakyamuni Buddha wishes for us. So I thank you very much, um, you know, especially uh, Bishop Matsumoto and uh, Reverend uh, Kevin and other leaders who have helped uh, to make this happen. So I really uh, like to express my deepest appreciation and all the people who signed up or tuned in I appreciate your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sensei. I uh, really appreciated your inspiration to, you know, hear the words, especially of Shinran, you know, once more. Um, I think sometimes, uh, you know, we don't, um, you know, remember to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, listen to his words. You know, we we hit, we hear a lot of other uh, you know types of things and uh, and forget what a treasure you know, he really is. And so thank you for bringing him back to us. Um, I, I'd like to remind our our uh, participants that live chat is available for you to um, you know make comments or ask questions. Um, do have a few things already you know from from the chat. Uh, you know, one uh, has to do with your uh, Bachan's poem. And it says, I do deeply appreciate when you said Bachan is Namo Amida Butsu. Does that mean your Bachan is in Amida's embrace and be with you beyond all kinds of ego, mind of distractions, bono, oneness? Everything, yes. Bachan is Namo Amida Butsu. And then uh, another question and uh, comment is, uh, there seems to be a paradox. Bodhisattva Dhammakara fulfilled his 48 vows and became Amida Buddha. However, as we look at the world around us, it is still burning. You know, we haven't made much progress, it seems. Yes, so that's why uh, Amida has uh, infinite life, life until all uh, beings be uh, rescued. You know, his, I shouldn't say his, but its work is never done. And uh, medicine, the remedy has been identified, given to us, 
And it's our, our side we need to really pay attention. And when each person realizes that person's world changes and that has to be done. Each individual has to encounter starting from myself. So world is me, I, and I am the world. And the world is crying. And that cry, I am one representing the world, listening to uh, Shinran Shonin's uh, words. Okay. Um, I, I have a kind of a, a generalized, you know, question, um, you know, a, as a, you know, you as a sentient being who's entrusted Amida and devoted yourself to Jodo Shinshu ministry for, you know, about 50 years, um, you know, do you, you know, what do you see as the role, you know, and as a, a former bishop, you know, what do you see the role of our ministers, you know, to be in um, either guiding or leading or both, you know, um, lay congregations, you know, to, to the peace through Dharma? Um, um, you know, I think many times, uh, you know, our ministers um, con consider themselves more, you know, teachers than leaders. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that is a Hongganji type of tradition or, um, you know, or if you, you know, when you were, you know, bishop, if that's the kind of ministers you were trying to develop, uh, you know, for your, your BCA uh, Sangha. I like to uh, see uh, ministers and leaders together looking up to the same light. Um, and the ministers and the leaders, they are the ones sitting in front of um, Buddha and uh, paying attention to what needs to be done, meaning what is it that we need to hear. So minister um, is... Uh, uh, Japanese minister's role in Hawaii and BCA may be a little different. Uh, Expectation-wise, uh, this, uh, this is what I heard uh, uh, Mini is like a mini, you know? You <laughs> put yourself in front of Buddha. Uh, Japanese temple, minister is given the task of uh, taking care of religious affair of the temple. Of course, um, uh, you know, uh, chanting every day and uh, uh, cleaning the onaijin and those things, the Japanese temple. The Japanese temple is that. Uh, here, uh, sometimes ministers not living right next to the uh, temple building. So uh, ministers may not be able to uh, do what Japanese ministers in Japan do, but ministers just like, okay, office, the White House president and president is the head. So when you are passing in front of president, you acknowledge president. <laughs> I don't know here, you don't bow, but uh, you say, you know, you, you are in a way servant to the president. You, you're assistant, not assistant, but we are ministers are servant, <laughs> servant to uh, uh, Buddha. So we show that our uh, willingness to commit ourselves to take care of uh, Buddha. Okay. Temples, head of the temple is 
Buddha, not a minister. So minister is there to, you know, uh, attend daily services, right? And uh, uh, in this country, <laughs> I don't know how much we could expect a minister to do every day. Sometimes they have day off and this and that. So uh, it's a little different, but the big picture, the ministers, we are trained to take care of uh, Buddha's uh, residence, Buddha, you know, Buddha is uh, living in the uh, Hondo. So the minister is in charge. That's why sometimes minister says, uh, people who have no uh, uh, background information do not go into Onaijin because they don't know what they're doing. You know, they may uh, mistreat things. So ministers uh, receive education how to serve Buddha. And that's the Tokudo. Tokudo is the first entrance into the Sangha. Okay. So uh, they are granted to become uh, Sangha members of clergy. And they are given Kyogyo's copy of book, Kyogyo Shinsho. Now you could study. Now we give you this book. But uh, uh, here, uh, it's very difficult to be like a Japanese uh, uh, minister in Japan, but still to me, ministers, the first one to uh, encourage uh, members to uh, hear the Dharma and facilitate the religious activities at the temple. So the lay leaders understanding the role of minister and financially and physically, spiritually support the activities within their capacity. Okay. So minister showing the direction, direction, and the members understanding what the minister's direction, what can we do to help you make that happen? Yeah. Of course, there's a limitation in the finance and this and that, but the general picture, the minister is given the task to be in charge of the religious affair. And uh, here in Japan, you know, ministers are not expected to give Dharma message every, every weekend. Uh, they have a special, specialized ministers. Uh, they could uh, uh, ask <laughs> these ministers to come and speak. So they are trained to be, uh, you know, pu public speaking and all these things. So they are very good. But, Local ministers, they are expected to uh, give, you know, the Dharma message every weekend. But here in this country, ministers are expected to be janitor and uh, caretaker and uh, chanter and uh, meeting, you know, all these uh, great speaker and everything. Of course, ministers are trying to be the best as, as best as they can, but uh, we, we are not the... Uh, uh, how should I say, uh, we are spiritually, we are same as members, you know, we are uh, no different. So, but the role, the responsibility is given as a caretaker of the uh, temple. So uh, depending upon the temple, but bishop, as a bishop, what I wanted to do is bring Shinran Shonin to the center stage. You know, so education, education was the number one priority for leaders and the ministers. Ministers, myself too, need to be re, uh, re reminded, you know, of a teaching. Sometimes uh, we, uh, you know, st get stale. <laughs> so, but the ministers to me needs the outside world sometimes, uh, always at the temple, always with the members, uh, not much to share with members. Uh, you know, I wish, you know, ministers could have sabbatical leave or something and, uh, you know, then go out and experience something and bring back something. Uh, so there are many things that uh, Bishop of the uh, Kyodan, you know, could uh, facilitate or encourage uh, Kyodan to do. Uh, so Jodo Shinshu Center was built for education purpose. So uh, 
nurturing the leaders, leaders including ministers, ministers continuing education, people who want to become ministers, ministers assistant, you know, Dharma school teachers, temple leaders. It wasn't uh, designed to bring thousand people to the Jodo Shinshu Center. It was designed to have like a group of 20 or 30 to stay there and uh, spend a few days and go back and help the local uh, religious activities. Same time deepening their own appreciation of uh, Nembut's teaching. So main thing is direction, looking at the same direction. When you do, when you are looking at the same direction, you know, it's not like a two heads of the uh, bird, you know, <laughs> one goes this way, the other one goes that way. If it's both of them looking at the same direction, smooth. Yeah. Sorry, uh, took so much time on that. Yeah, thank, thank you, Sensei. Uh, we have some other comments, not really questions, but you know, you may want to uh, comment or not about it. But uh, you know, one comment is, as a dirty old man with a heart of gratefulness, my head is down, and I just take refuge in Amita, who promises to embrace all as they are. So I, I think he was responding to some of the things that you were saying. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, another one was uh, uh, one of our viewers really enjoyed Diane Johnson's poems, thought they were very meaningful. So thank you. And then um, I think because we were talking about roles of ministers, uh, another viewer says, my sensei said that overseas minister is Kai Kiyoshi, and she is a servant to open Kai, the Dharma Kyo. So my sensei is a servant to open the Dharma. But, but for me, I admire and respect her. That's true. Kai Kyoshi, messenger. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I don't have any other comments. I'm looking to see if there's any late breaking, you know, types of things. Then maybe you could go back to the uh, message that I read at the United Nations. Uh, you could go back to the page. Uh, 2011, uh, Ogui Sensei, then Bishop of the BCA, was invited, but uh, he was uh, uh, he, he had to go to Japan for the Buddhist World Buddhist Convention, Buddhist Women's Convention. So he asked me to go to the event. Uh, took place at the uh, United Nations uh, uh, General Assembly and commemorating Shakamuni Buddha's uh, 2,600 year uh, uh, anniversary. Would you, uh, carry? could you go back to that page, like a third or fourth from the... You want the one with the picture or the one after the picture? The picture, yeah, that's two page. Two pages. Yeah, that's, uh, no, not that one, the, uh, further down. Uh, this one? No, no uh, down, down about uh, third from the bottom, fourth yeah, from the bottom. Yeah, that's there it the is. That's the, yeah, that's the one. Thank you. Could you uh, uh, read it? United Nations message peace, harmony, and coexistence. First of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me to this auspicious occasion of the United Nations VSAC celebration commemorating the 2600th year of Buddha's enlightenment. The theme for this event is peace, harmony, and coexistence. This is the most appropriate theme for today's world and for religious leaders. The big question is then, what do we need to do in order to bring peace, harmony, and coexistence into this troubled world. How can we make it happen? Today, I would like to share my humble appreciation of the Buddha Dharma through our Pure Land tradition.
Next page. Do you know that a bad person doesn't exist? What really exists is this I, who thinks that the other person is bad. A person who thinks, a, per, a person who I think is bad may become good if he or she does something favorable to me. I'm sure that I've had similar experiences in your life. Good or bad is not a permanent characteristic of a person. Good or bad arises in relation to our circumstances with each other. Likewise, we often say that we have problems. In reality, this I is the problem. This I indeed is what the four noble, noble truths are trying to say. It truly takes outside eyes to view this I. These outer eyes are the eyes of wisdom, the supreme awakened one, the Buddha. In the Pure Land Buddhist tradition, each of us is urged to take refuge in the immeasurable light and life. This true wisdom is summoning me through the calling of Namo, meaning to take refuge in, and the Amida Butsu means the immeasurable light and life. This supreme wisdom calls to all people, regardless of gender, color, creed, beliefs, or social status. The supreme wisdom calls to everyone, whether they are Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindu, Buddhist, or atheist. Each of us, without exception, has been trapped in a small shell and transmigrating from darkness to darkness. In the eyes of the Buddha, this is truly sad. Looking to the supreme wisdom, we begin to see the truth of our foolish selves. The true Buddhism is a religion of wisdom. By encountering the supreme wisdom, each of us can make this world a better place so that all of us can live our lives to the fullest and then hand down this world to the future generations. Thank you very much. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you very much for sharing that message with uh, people today. Uh, that day, uh, so many speakers spoke and each person given like seven minutes and everyone was exceeding their time limit. So at the beginning, this is a recreation of my message, but actually I spoke more than that. Um, at the beginning, I kind of cynically said, well, everybody was not thinking of coexistence because my time was getting less and less. <laughs> and so I made my message, uh, you know, uh, short. So, you know, we live in this world, like I was waiting for my turn to come and my time is supposed to be seven minutes, but because of other people's long lengthy messages, I have to cut it short. So within that, given situation, I have to do my best. And each and every one of us are placed in a certain limited conditions. In that condition, we try to do our best. We could cry about the condition, yes. We could spend time why this is this, but best you could do is first acknowledge the situation and do what you can do. It, within that circumstance and conditions. And a good example is, so, you know, some of the, all these people incarcerated during, the World War, during World War II in the barbed wire, they did, you know, they tried to get the most out of it in there. Of course, they're not happy, but within that time frame and location, they did what they can. We are, each individual has barbed wire around. We do, you know, your life is not same as other people's life, but you, as you, you could do your best in whatever you're doing. Look at Shohei Otani, people praising. He's a baseball player, but you know, he hands the bat to the bat boy in a certain way. Uh, he picks the trash. You know, we could do many things within our limited realm of our you know, life. We don't need to ask other people, hey, let's do this. I and you, 
we could be the best you know in the area if you're cooking do the best cooking you can <laughs> if you are chanting do a good chanting if you are a tempo leader be a good leader so within that realm we do whatever we can and appreciating Namu Amidabu's teaching. And we wish that people coming after us receive same benefit as we received. When we leave this world, you know, your parents, I'm sure, taught you after you finish using a room, clean up, make it better than before. When we leave this world, we have to leave this world same or better than the time we came into this world. We cannot leave a mess, right? So within our life, in your limited situation, you know, look around, do what you can. But with this understanding of uh, Nemo's teaching. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, spending time and uh, listening to my inadequate, <laughs> inadequate presentation of uh, uh, subject uh, peace through Buddha Dharma. This is just a uh, one short uh, presentation. You could have continued self-education, uh, attending church services, discussion, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, please uh, remember when you have suffering or difficulties, that's encouragement from Buddha. Please go to Buddha for guidance. So I uh, thank you once again for your invitation and the time that I was able to spend with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sensei. That was uh, uh, very inspirational. And I know that it'll, uh, you know, uh, urge me to ded rededicate myself to hearing Shinran's uh, uh, teachings and, uh, and to the, our audience. Uh, I hope that you appreciated the, uh, uh, the presentation by Sensei Umezu. And um, until uh, summer session 2022, number 48, uh, we'll bid you adieu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namma 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 Namma